was uh, working on a tractor that day in Hopeville and my dad had come and picked me up. We were riding, uh, heading back home and got a call from my uncle. My dad and uncle worked together. He said uh, give him a call or he wanted to see him, talk to him personally. And at that point, I knew there was something wrong. It was Sunday, May 5th, 1991 when I was at home and I received the phone call that my son was missing. The vehicle that he was in with a friend had been found parked along a canal bank um, east of El Centro. Well, naturally, I hurried on out and found what I was uh, told to be true, and we started looking for my son, Michael. I remember my friend uh, be very vividly because we used to always go out and swim in the canals. Well, one day we were swimming in the canals together and uh, we were in an area where we really shouldn't have been, but we had been there for four, before many times. And uh, this day was a little bit different because my friend didn't come home. I got pulled out of the canal and he didn't. Uh, my name's Fred Mercurio. I'm a feed commodities, livestock commodities dealer. My name is Daryl Cornett. I'm a Imperial Valley resident for the last four years, but I have ties to the Imperial Valley because this is where I grew up. I just recently came back. Hi, my name's Steve, and the reason why I'm here today is to share with you a tragedy that happened in our family with the hopes that it would spare another family in experiencing a similar tragedy. This is my son, Michael. Michael drowned in a swimming accident with a friend of his um, in 1991. And the days after his drowning were some of the darkest days of my life and the life of my family. Thinking about what could have been, what should have been, could we have done something differently? Did we take seriously enough the thought that the kids would be swimming in the canals, not understanding the the swift current and how difficult it is with all the underwater obstacles to negotiate the what could happen. I had been working that week and my brother was uh, not and he was in the canal. We drove home and my uncle was there and my mom was hysterical and it was pretty bad. That day we were all out there, there, there was probably 50 people out, out at this canal swimming and having fun. And uh, when this happened, uh, he didn't come up, but I didn't believe that he was gone. I didn't believe it. I, I said, he's, there's no way he's gone. He's out, he's hiding in the bushes somewhere. He's just, he's not. I know, I know Tommy, he's not, he's not gone. Well, about an hour later, I was able to witness him being pulled out of the canal. And one of my memories that stuck in my head still to this day is when they were zipping him up in the body bag. And that's, that, that really hits home. Uh, I am Ray Loera. I'm the sheriff for Imperial County. I think that it's uh, very important that uh, everyone recognize that, that there are dangers that may not be visible. A lot of times we're, uh, we're talking to, uh, or we look at a canal and it looks very calm, it, it looks very cool, it looks uh, very quiet, but what you don't see is the currents underneath and you don't see the depth of the canals. Uh, you know, the canals are not uh, uniform. Some are deeper than others because of the currents. Uh, a lot of the incidents that we've been involved with have had uh, very, very strong currents the All-American Canal is uh, probably one of the fastest moving canals uh, uh, anywhere. Um, we've had incidences where in training exercises, uh, even those people that are in great shape uh, that do this for a living, uh, try to hold on to a, a safety rope and can't do it for more than a few seconds because the current is so fast. 
The looks of the refreshing water are so deceiving during the summertime when it's hot here in the Imperial Valley. I've had many years of working along the canals and I know how hot the summers can get in the attraction of the water. But it is so deceiving, the current. What looks calm at the surface underneath can be a torrent. And very few people, even strong swimmers, can negotiate the pull of the water running through the siphons and the canals. There can be stuff that's in there that you could hit your head on, you could cut yourself on. You just never know what you cannot see. You think you know, but you don't. Just as I thought that my friend was gonna make it out alive. Don't make the same mistake. My name's Walter Colas, and I pastor Christ Community Church, and I have grown up in the Imperial Valley, lived here most of my life. I've been pastoring 15 years, and I've been conducting funeral services uh, for about 18 years. Done many different funerals through the years, and one of the most devastating things to any family is when they lose a teenage son or daughter. I've seen old people die. I've done the funeral of even an infant. Uh, but there's nothing more devastating to a family when they lose a child or a young teenage son or daughter. I just know that it's not, uh, it's not a, a good thing to feel that loss. And we never forget it. And I know that uh, had he been here today that maybe we could be doing something together. Seeing a youngster coming in into their own being, into finding their own way and needing a little bit of guidance, that was cut short on May 5th, 1991, when my son Michael drowned. Those hopes, those dreams, the aspirations of the conversations that we would have would never be fulfilled. You know, I've been back in the valley for four years now, and I still see his parents. And after all of this time, you know, when I face them and I see them, we don't even have to say anything. We just look at each other and we know. And I just wish that my friend was still here. I, I, I think it's really difficult uh, when we uh, bring those memories of the past back. Uh, of our family the way it was and the change that happened after and it's definitely something I wouldn't wish upon anybody or any family especially the parent I'm a parent right now I have two kids there is always going to be uh, or there may always be an, an occurrence that you come upon someone needing assistance uh, first thing is that you don't jump in the water you don't go try to help them by going, putting yourself in danger. Uh, the first thing you should do is, hopefully you have access to a cell phone, and I think almost everybody in the, in the world now has a cell phone, uh, is to call the emergency number 911. Uh, you uh, make sure that you give them as much information, uh, you keep the person in sight, uh, so that uh, hopefully in the, our response time is quick enough that we can get there and, and provide that assistance that, that needs to be provided in a safe manner. Kids are going to do what kids are going to do, but that doesn't absolve parents of the responsibility of being the parent and doing what they can to take it seriously and have a sit-down conversation with their teens and those other little ones who look to their teenage brothers and sisters as examples. Don't let this tragedy be a part of your life. I just want to encourage anybody that's thinking about swimming in a canal that, you know, this is the real deal. It's a life choice. You think it's all fun and games, but it's not. You know, you may swim today, but tomorrow you may not come out alive. And if, and if you think that you're not that person, that's not true. You need to think again. Maybe think about your family and what you're going to put them through if you make that decision.